obstetric brachial plexopathy, herbs, plump case palsy. This video has been produced from a web source that has been shown below. I would like to thank OrthoBullet team and chapter editors John Edgington, Elaine Jockin. Summary obstetric brachial plexopathy is injury to the brachial plexus that occurs during birth, usually as a result of a stretching injury from a difficult vaginal delivery. Diagnosis is made clinically and depends on the nerve roots involved. Treatment can be observation or operative depending on the nerve roots involved, the severity of injury, and the location of the nerve injury. Epidemiology. Incidence. Approximately 1 to 4 per 1,000 live births. Decreasing in frequency due to improved obstetric care. Anatomic location. Often right-sided or bilateral. Risk factors. Large for gestational age. Macrosomia. Multiporous pregnancy. Difficult presentation. Shoulder dystocia. Forceps delivery. Breach position. Prolonged labor. Etiology. Cause. Usually a stretching injury from a difficult vaginal delivery. Some rare cases reported following caesarean sections. Associated orthopedic conditions. Glenohumeral dysplasia. Increased glenoid retroversion. Humeral head flattening. Posterior humeral head subluxation. Develops in 70% of infants with obstetric brachial plexopathy caused by internal rotation contracture, loss of external rotation. Elbow flexion contracture. Etiology is unclear. Likely due to persistent relative triceps weakness, C7, compared with biceps, C5 to 6. Clavicle and humerus fractures. Torticollis. Naraka's classification. Group 1. Duchenne herbs palsy. Paralysis of deltoid and biceps. Intact wrist and digital flexion. Extension. C5-C6. Group 2. Intermediate paralysis. Paralysis of deltoid, biceps, and wrist and digital extension. Intact wrist and digital flexion. C5-C7. Group 3, total brachial plexus palsy. Flail extremity without Horner syndrome. C5-T1. Group 4, total brachial plexus palsy with Horner syndrome. Flail extremity with Horner syndrome. C5-T1. Presentation general. Symptoms. Lack of active hand and arm motion. Physical exam. Upper extremity exam. Arm hangs limp at side in an adducted and internally rotated position. Decreased shoulder external rotation. Affected shoulder subluxates posteriorly. Provocative testing. Stimulate neonatal reflexes including moro, asymmetric tonic neck and voiter reflexes. Pain with gentle shaking of a flail arm may indicate pseudoparalysis from infection or fracture rather than nerve palsy. Classically, the reflex is elicited while holding the infant supine, with the head dropped slightly backward. This produces sudden extension and a BDUCTION of the upper extremities. Imaging. Radiographs. May be useful for evaluation of clavicle or humerus fractures. Limited utility in infant given minimal ossification of humeral head and glenoid axillary view to evaluate position of humeral head if patient is older and suspicion is high for joint subluxation. Myelography. Court myelography. MRI may be used to distinguish between root avulsion and extraforaminal rupture. EMG, NCV. Poor reliability and often underestimate the severity of injury. Ultrasound. Allows for assessment of joint subluxation or dislocation. Herbs palsy, C5, 6, upper lesion. Most common type. Mechanism. Results from lateral flexion of the head towards the contralateral shoulder with depression of the ipsilateral shoulder producing traction on plexus occurs during difficult delivery in infants. Physical exam adducted, internally rotated shoulder, pronated forearm, extended elbow, waiter's tip. C5 deficiency. Axillary nerve deficiency deltoid, teres minor weakness. Suprascapular nerve deficiency. Supraspinatus, 
infraspinatus weakness musculocutaneous nerve deficiency biceps and brachialis weakness. C6 deficiency. Radial nerve deficiency brachioradialis, supinator weakness. Prognosis. The best prognosis for spontaneous recovery. Clump case palsy, C8, T1, lower lesion. Mechanism. Rare in obstetric palsy. Usually arm presentation with subsequent traction, abduction from trunk physical exam. Deficit of all of the small muscles of the hand, ulna and median nerves. Claw hand. Wrist in extreme extension because of the unopposed wrist extensors. Hyperextension of MCP due to loss of hand intrinsics flexion of IP joints due to loss of hand intrinsics. Prognosis. Poor prognosis for spontaneous recovery frequently associated with a preganglionic injury and Horner's syndrome. Total plexus palsy, C5-T1. Mechanism. Stretch. Rupture and avulsion injury. Physical exam. Flaccid arm. Both motor and sensory deficits. Imaging. Chest radiograph to look for ipsilateral hemidiaphragm paralysis from phrenic, nerve injury. Prognosis. Worst prognosis. Treatment. Non-operative. Observation daily passive exercises by parents indications. The first line of treatment for all obstetric brachial plexopathies while awaiting return of function. Key to treatment is maintaining passive motion while waiting for nerve function to return. Operative. Microsurgical nerve grafting. Indications. Lack of anti-gravity biceps function between 3 to 9 months of age. Postganglionic injury with intact nerve roots with segmental injury to nerve. Outcomes. Improved outcomes are seen with shorter grafts. Nerve transfer or neurotization. Definition. Nerve transfer refers to fascicles from one nerve transferred into another nerve that supplies a muscle. Neurotization refers to placing nerve fascicles directly into a neuromuscular junction of a muscle. Indications. Lack of anti-gravity biceps function between 3 to 9 months of age. Preganglionic injury or avulsion of nerve roots.